Hello, uh, this is Marcella D. Moore joining you tonight in the She Is You uh, Facebook group. So delighted to be here tonight. Um, I'm grateful to Cheryl for asking me to come and spend some time with you all tonight. And what I'm going to do, I am just going to go ahead and proceed uh, with the Facebook Live tonight. And those of you who did not get an opportunity to uh, listen live can certainly listen to the replay and I welcome those of you who are joining me for the replay tonight. Uh, there are so many things that are taking place. This is ex an exciting time of the year. Uh, there are so many uh, conferences going on now, telesummits going on now because people are determined in their minds to finish strong. So I am here with you all tonight uh, because I was invited by Cheryl and I'm just blessed to be able to be connected to her, to be connected to you in the She Is You Facebook group. So tonight we're talking about serving versus people pleasing. And for many of you who know Cheryl, you know that uh, she is on this mission. One of her assignments now is about and on people pleasing. Uh, she has many assignments, as I see. We recently met, but since the time we've recently just met, but since the time we've been together, I've seen her hand in so many things. I've seen her working. I've seen her following through on the assignments that God has given her, and that is such a blessing. So again, this is Marcella D. Moore. I am the CEO and founder of Motivate and Pray. Um, I invite you to connect with me on Facebook. You can go to my main Motivate and Pray page and like it there, or you can find me on Facebook at Marcella D. Moore. I have a business page that is there, and I also have uh, my friend page as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Again, welcome to each and every one of you, and it's my prayer that our conversation tonight and, and our time together, I'm not going to be with you very long, but I do, um, Cheryl thought it was important. Hello, Jacqueline. Um, such a pleasure to meet you. We haven't met in person, but I had the privilege of connecting with you uh, through the She Is You, the telesummit was going on, and you did a tremendous job and getting those uh, uh, profile pictures out, flyers out, everything that you've been doing has been a blessing. So I certainly want to encourage you with that to continue to keep your hand to the plow and being obedient to the assignment that God has given you because I know great and extraordinary things are coming your way. So we're going to get started tonight. And before we start, I do, I want to take time and just invite God in and to uh, surrender this time and our time together to him. Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day that you have made. And as your daughters, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you so much for another opportunity to sit at your feet. We thank you for another opportunity to converse with you. We thank you for another opportunity to expand our minds and to dialogue uh, as it pertains to our self-development and our growth in you. We thank you this night, God, that even as we sit and we receive from you that you would allow each and every word to fall on good soil, that you would bless your daughters as they sit at your feet tonight, that you would give them insight, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them understanding, and that you would give them the capacity to expand their minds so that they can receive that which you're saying unto them. God, we're here. All of us are here. We're One thing that we have in common, we're here is because we want to do your will. We're here because we want to seek your face. We're here because we want to be obedient to you. We're here because we no longer want to carry the dead weight, but we want to walk in the strength that you have ordained for us to do in this season. God, we come tonight and we watch this replay tonight because we want to hear from you. We desire to know your heartbeat. We desire to know the direction that you have for us. And as your obedient daughters today, your word says that if we acknowledge you in all of our ways, that you would direct our path. So tonight we acknowledge you and we surrender to you, trusting and believing that you will direct our paths tonight. So we give you the glory 
story. We ask that you have your way. We ask that you just breathe upon each and every word tonight, God, that you would allow the words to be, become rhema and that you would just open our mind for for wholeness, open our minds for deliverance, open our minds to be able to push through the thing that may be hindering us and stopping us from being effective in this earth. So we surrender all that we are to you tonight. We thank you for watching over us and covering us and just being the God that you are because truly you are an awesome father and we are your beloved and our desires, oh God, this night is to please you. So we this we pray this prayer sealing already, God, that what you're doing, thanking you in advance and giving you the glory right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. We give glory to God tonight, and I just thank him because that's one thing. I love to talk to him. I love to converse with him. I love to share with him and, and in my conversation with him. There's not a bunch of um, real big words or anything like that. Sometimes my most effective prayer is simply, uh, God help me. And there are times when I can't say anything else and, and I just open up my mouth and I say, God, help me. And if we allow God to help us in all that we say and do, we will find that he answers, that he comes through. Hi, Cheryl. He, we will see that he is such an awesome king. So again, tonight, we're here tonight talking about serving servanthood versus people pleaser. As I said, when I started this tonight, many of you know that Cheryl is on this mission. Uh, one of her assignments in the kingdom is to um, talk to and, and bring light to this subject as it pertains to people pleasers and people pleasing. And one thing that I know about us as women, I think that so many people have uh, attached themselves to this movement because we are so guilty of being in that space and in that place where we desire to please people and understanding that we get there because we it, it comes from this place of rejection. It comes from this place of wanting to be seen. It comes from this place of wanting to be heard. And many of us, if we go back and we have the dialogue within ourselves, and even if we have a conversation amongst each other, we will discover that the root of it for most of us came from our childhood. There are many things that we experienced in our lives. For me, my story is one of my stories as it pertains to people pleasers. I am the oldest of four children. I have a sister who we are 16 months apart, and then I have um, a brother five years old, younger, and another brother eight years younger, and I've been the oldest, and I feel like I came out of the womb having to lead and direct, and I always felt that my mother loved my sister more than I. I grew up, so therefore, I always tried to, to make everybody happy. I always tried to do the right thing. I always tried to raise my hand and say, look, see me, see me, I'm here. And because of that, it led me on a path of although I am independent, although I am a strong woman, as some may say, I am a leader and I always have been, but that residue from everything and feeling like I just wanted mommy to see me, it carried into my relationships um, with men. It carried into my relationships with, with girlfriends and sisterhood and all of that. And it's an amazing thing because um, even as it pertains for some of us, we, we are in the body of Christ and it, when it comes to church and us being in church and going to church and, and serving here and doing different things because we want to be seen, we want to be validated. We, we get in the place of uh, becoming a people pleaser. Now, when it comes down to a serving piece, and 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 Cheryl and I, we were on a, a call or a radio show a couple of weeks ago, and I think that um, the the host there asked me a question, and I and I, I responded to her, and I said that what it is because as it pertains to people pleasing, some of us we get stuck there because we think that that is what God wants us to do, and we confuse servanthood, we confuse serving with people pleasing because we feel that if we do, if we serve you and we become a yes person for you, or we do everything that you want to do and that we want to nurse your baby and we want to do everything concerning you and we forget ourselves, we think that is what God requires of us. And especially women, um, 
I am a mother. Uh, I was married. I went from being happily married in my definition to being becoming a single parent, a single mother of two children. So I've, I had to take care of them. And then my mother got sick. I had to take care of her. And I've always taken care of my siblings and family members and things like that. And I never got tired of it. There are times when I felt overwhelmed, but I didn't get tired enough to say, you know what, I need to do something about this because I felt though if I got tired and I complained about it, that God was not happy with me. And I have these conversations with women almost on a daily basis. They'll tell me about how a person takes advantage of them. They'll talk, tell about how they're on this committee at church. They walk on that committee at church. They do this at church. Every time something goes down, they call them to do something at church and they never say no because they believe that's what God called them to do. And so my question is that is you tonight. My question to you is um, why? Why do you feel that uh, God is pleased with you um, downplaying yourself? He is pleased with you not tending to the purpose that he is giving you or that he is pleased with you uh, in taking care of everyone else and not taking care of you and who he's called you to be. Why is that? Why is that? And I know part of it is because what has been handed down to us as women, even from the time of slavery, when, when the mothers and the women had to go, when they would separate the families, they would do stuff to the men and they wouldn't allow the men to be there to have families. And then they would take a, a, a mother who may be another woman's sister and take her. And then that woman, she's having to raise her kids. She's raising the master's kids. She's raising her sister's kids and she's doing it on her own. And I think over time, we've just taken on that same mentality and we feel as though we have to stand in the gap and we have to do everything. Hello, God bless you, Celeste. Now, God calls us, and I'm glad um, that I said that word, standing in the gap, because God does call us as intercessors to stand in the gap. He said to Ezekiel that I sought for men who would stand in the gap before them. He's called intercessors are the ones who stand in the middle, and they pull they pull things towards God. God is on one side, intercessors here, and the person or the situation is on the other side. And as intercessor, we open our mouths and we pray and we declare things according to the will of God. Yes, God has called us to do that as it pertains to the gift that he has given us and the call he has given us. But then there's something that's deeper in this as, as we are as human beings, as we are as, as humans and souls, that there is something more more that's on the inside of us that cries out all of the time. And a lot of times we silence the voice because we think that it's God's will for us to take care of everybody else and to put ourselves last. And see, I'm going to tell you when I learned the difference between the two, because I thought that was the direction I was supposed to move in. I thought that I, I, I honored God when I allowed everyone else to be first and I put myself last. I was on an airplane many years ago, many years ago. I was on an airplane and some of you have the same testimony. I was on an airplane and on the airplane, uh, the flight attendant got up and she started giving the safety signals and she started to giving the safety um, information and talking to us about what to do if something goes wrong on the plane. And she said to us, she said, if you were traveling with a small child or an older person, um, so she talked about the, the mask coming down from the ceiling. So if the airplane began to go low and we needed oxygen, she said that the mask come down. And when the mask come down, if you're traveling with a young child or older person, you put your mask on first and then you proceed to help them. That's when I got my revelation. I didn't get my revelation about that from over the pulpit. I didn't get my revelation over that from a preacher or a man of God or a woman of God. I got my revelation on that sitting on the airplane one day, feeling so overwhelmed, sitting there and getting ready to go on a so-called trip to enjoy myself, thinking about everyone else. And I love the scripture that uh, Cheryl gave. Um, and, and you said you could relate to that, Jackie, right? I love the scripture that Cheryl gave and that she put on the header um, when she talked about me being here with you all tonight. It's Galatians, the first chapter, the 10th verse. It says, for I 
Or am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So we have to learn. That's why I love Holy Spirit. I love Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit leads and points us and directs us and guides us into all truth. And we have to learn how to rightly divide. We have to know what God is saying to us in this time and this season. We have to know because so many times we want to stretch ourselves. And we, one thing I put, I posted on Facebook today, I put up a post there and it said distraction anything that takes your mind off of or something that you're supposed to be paying attention to. And what we have to do in this day and age, and unfortunately, I had to wait until I got in my late 40s and my 50s to get this, but I'm hoping today that I am speaking to someone in their 20s and their 30s and their 40s that you can get this much earlier than I did, understanding that self-love is not selfish and that God is not giving you Fs or or uh, minuses because you are saying no to doing things for people. Being a servant is servicing, but it's one thing to service and being a servant when God has not called you to do so. Uh, and then you say, okay, I'm going to do this in your heart, in your spirit. You know it's not something that you really want to do, but because it's something that man requires of you and you think that's the right thing to do, that's why you do it. Paul said, for I am I now seeking the approval of man? And what I understand, and, and one reason, another reason that I got this, and it began to make so much more sense to me, because I realized that, number one, all of us, everyone, we're, we're all looking for love. And for many of us, I mentioned earlier that some of us deal with the root from our childhood. Mine was because I fought my entire life wanting my mother to pay attention to me because I thought she loved my sister more. My mother loved me. She, she loved me the best of her ability. But I feel that all of the attention went to my my sister. And because of that, I began to search for love, sometimes in the wrong places. And I really wanted to be validated by my mother. And it wasn't until I had the conversation with her not too long ago that she had no idea that that was the case. She had no idea that it affected me that way. So what I did in turn is I had two children. I have a son. I have a daughter four years apart. I made sure everything in me on a daily basis, I did not want my children to grow up experiencing the same thing that I experienced. I didn't want them to feel like one was like more than the other because I understood the road that it took me down. There were so many things that I went through in life that I wouldn't have had to go through had I felt validated. But the thing that I so love about Holy Spirit, the thing that I so love about God is because I understand now that my validation does not come from another human being. It comes the moment I open my eyes in the morning. That's the thing we have to understand. The moment we open our eyes in the morning, God validates us. Not when we put on our lipstick, not when we put the earrings on, not when we take a shower, not when we get dressed, but you're laying in the bed. And the moment you open your eyes, God validates you. So when we learn and we learn to embrace that greater love than this, than the man to lay down his life for his friends, when we understand that God loves us so much that his love covers a multitude of sin and it takes care of everything that we experience. So when we embrace that and we understand that, then we won't walk around trying to get that validation validation from man. And yes, there are times I'm a mother and I have children and I know the importance of my children and they're adults now, but when they were children, I know the importance of me wrapping my arms around them and looking them in the face and telling them that I love them and telling them that they're important and telling them that they matter. That is so important. But at the same time, we have to understand that even when we don't get those things, that we can come to God and we can have the conversation with him. We can make a decision within ourselves that yes, I may have experienced these things when I was a young child. I probably didn't get the things 
that I really wanted to get when I was younger, but God, I am coming to you as the author and finisher of my faith. I am coming to you trusting me that you are going to make up the void because if you don't allow God to make up the void, if you don't allow him to validate you, if you don't embrace the love that he has for you, you will constantly go around thinking that it's the works. And it's not in the works. God honors the works because he says in Hebrews that he does not forget our labor of love as we minister to his, as we minister to the saints. But we have to rightly divide this thing. And, and I was getting ready to say balance, but I don't even want to say that word because I think sometimes balance is over overrated because sometimes we try to sit and we say i give 10 percent to children 10 percent to spouse 10 percent to work 10 percent to church no it's greater than that you have to understand that god has placed something on the inside of you that causes you to thrive and when you are not thriving then you are not in the place where you need to be a false balance is an abomination unto the lord but a just weight is his delight when you are in just weight mode, you are that create creativity that God gives you, that ability to see beyond what you're in and what you're experiencing, it pushes through. It pushes through. So you're not chasing after people. You're not chasing after circumstances and situations. You're chasing after God. You're chasing after Holy Spirit. You're chasing after Jesus Christ himself. You're chasing the will of God because you understand that, that when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all things will be added unto you. We have to say, Holy Spirit, help me to write divide. I want to be a servant who is on assignment. I want to be a servant who is serving so that God's will can be manifested. Not a servant because I am trying to meet the needs of my flesh. And see, when you do it, that's why church hurt is so big today. That's why church hurt is huge today because we have all of these expectations on other human beings. We have these expectations for other human beings to validate us, to, to nurture us, to, to make us feel better, to make us feel good. We put the, that burden on another human being when God has given us the ability to love ourselves. One of my models is loving me, empowering me, and creating a better tomorrow because I understand that when I love me, it allows me to empower myself. I do the things that are necessary to make me strong. I do the things that are necessary to make me better. I do the things that are necessary to make me and help me grow. So when you love, when I say loving me, empowering me, and, and creating a better tomorrow, then my tomorrow can be a tomorrow that is purpose driven. It can be a tomorrow that is so much better. It can be a tomorrow that helps me go from better to best to greater. So we have to understand that. So I encourage you tonight to assess your life to assess yourself. Look at where you are, that burden that you have on the inside. You need to ask Holy Spirit to help you to rightly divide because God did not call you to be overwhelmed. The thing that I so love about true servinghood, true servinghood, true servinghood produces results. True servinghood, uh, you see the fruit from it. When you, when you do things and you know that, that your motive is to do the will of God, when you do things and you know that your motive is to please daddy, when you do things and you know that your motive is to be in the center of the will of God, you begin to see the fruit from it. When you're doing, when you people pleasing, there's no fruit coming from that because now you're serving the flesh. But when you serve the spirit, you begin to see the things uh, of the spirit. You begin to get the life of the spirit. You begin to hear the voice of the spirit. But when you, when you live by the flesh, you die by the flesh. Paul said, when you live by the flesh, you die by the flesh. But you live by the spirit, you obtain everlasting life. So we have to say, God, show me, show me 
I'm giving my life to you today with the children, with the spouse, with my job, with church, with the ministry, whatever you have called me to do. I'm giving my life. I'm laying it at your feet. And help me to make sure that every single thing that I am doing in this day, in this season, that it has come to, it is serving you and not serving man. It is serving you and not serving the flesh. I'm not doing what I want to do. To be, I'm not staying in this relationship when I no longer know that this relationship no longer serves the purpose that you placed on the inside of me. I'm no longer staying in this relationship because for the sake of, of having a man. It's the holidays and it's nice and, and everybody has somebody and this one has this one. But so God, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be by myself. But if you understand that God has called you again for such a time as this, when you understand that God loves you unconditionally, when you understand that God has a person that has been, been formed and designed specifically for you, you won't hold on to the dead weight. You won't hold on to the things that continue to, to make you and hold you down. When you are a true servant, especially when you are a servant leader, when you're serving and you're, you're, you're leading and you're going and you're dealing from the spirit and from the heart of God, you see the fruit. So when situations come and circumstances arrive and, and you begin to go through things and the enemy comes in like a flood, God will lift up a standard. You have to be true to yourself and true to who you are. And today, we're still in 2017. I believe today is what, uh, December 14th. So we still have some 17 more days to go before December 31st or to December 31st. You have 17 days to make a decision that you are no longer going to embrace the things that no longer serve God's purpose in your life that you are going to release everything and everybody that is around you that does not allow you to thrive, that does not allow you to grow, that does not allow the, the purpose and the will of God to be manifested in your life. Because listen to this, when you continue to support bad behavior, the behavior continues. So if you continue to deal with people and stay in situations that, that you're there because you want to please somebody, you're selling yourself short. You're selling yourself short and you're not able to, to, to reap the abundance of everything that God has for you. You matter to God. You are so special to him. He desires to do something that is so awesome in your life. When I tell you that God loves you unconditionally and you deserve to be treated like a queen, you'll take that people pleasing t-shirt off and you'll burn it. Because some of us, we have, we have the t-shirt. Some of us we have the, the trophies, some of us, we have the certifications, some of us, we have everything and we have mastered the art of people pleasing. But today, by the spirit of God and by the grace of God, I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus and I command you, sister, I command you, daughter, I command you, woman, to rise up this day in the name of Jesus and take your rightful place in this earth and know that there is one person who your heart should aim to please and that is Daddy God the Father himself because when you please him, Great things come out of your life. I think about the story of, of Mary and Martha and, and, and one wanted to serve and one wanted to serve as it pertained to working, but the other just wanted to sit at his feet and they both were serving. That's the thing that, that they didn't understand. Martha didn't understand they were both serving. They were just serving on different levels, but there comes a time where you have to stop serving in a way where you're just working, 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 and you have to sit at the foot of Jesus and serve him in praise and serve him in worship. And when you begin to do that, I'm here to tell you everything will shift in your life. 
I challenge you tonight. I challenge you tonight to be willing to let go of the things that no longer serve you. I challenge you tonight to ask God to give you the courage that you need so that you can let things go, so that you can let people go, so you can allow, allow the light that is in you to shine in a way. Because guess what? Some of you are playing small because you feel bad and you don't want to allow the light that God has given you. You think that, and you know that God has made your light bright, but because you're around people and their light is so dim and you don't want to hurt their feelings and you don't want them to feel sad. So you dim your light to stay on the point with them when God has given you a light that is so bright that it would eat up everything that the enemy is trying to do. And, and there's a story that God has in you that guess what? It can't come forth because it needs the brightness of the light. But you're playing small and, and you're allowing that light to be dim because you don't want to hurt their feelings. You don't want somebody to see the greatness that's on the inside of you. You don't want that, that leader or you don't want that person you're working with. You don't want them because you feel that you, you, you have to shine, that you don't, you don't want to outshine them. But God called you to. I never forget when I was married and I worked for this Japanese steamship line, I started in this company. I went there one day as a temp, I had just relocated. And I went to a temp agency and the temp agency begged me to go and help this company answer the phones. I'm like, I don't wanna answer the phones. I didn't come here to answer phones. I had just finished my uh, paralegal certification. I wanted to be a paralegal. That's all I was trying to do. And she was like, please, because we're going to lose them. The lady that I sent there, she walked away. Please, please. They begged me to go. I went there. I answered the phones for them. And the weeks went on, months went on. I'm, I'm not a receptionist. I'm not going to do this. So the, the vice president of the company, he came to me. He said, Marcella, please don't leave. Because we see so much in you. He said, I see much in you. And he said, we're starting and I'm forming some things. And I, I want to create a position for you, but it's going to take time. I need you to do this. So I stayed there and I, and I allowed him to do that. I went from answering the phones to being a sales assistant, to being an inside salesperson, to being a salesperson, to being an account manager. I just walked up, never knew anything about this industry in my life. And it was a male dominated industry. And I became the first woman, the first woman of color to be over a region in the Southeast Gulf. So that was Georgia, uh, Tennessee, Memphis, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. I mean, excelling. And I was married and I had two small children. And at that time, Ebony Magazine was doing an article of, of black women who dominate their industry. And I got a phone call and I said, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. I withdrew because my husband was trying to find his way. And I felt as if, if I went in this ebony magazine it was going to be seen all over the country and i couldn't i couldn't do that to my husband because my husband wasn't shining so my job as a woman and the and, and the wife and the mother my job was to stay small and i stayed small and i allowed that opportunity to just walk away from me and, and I realized that now, I didn't know any better, but I know how I felt about it. I still remember it today. I know how I felt about it. And I struggled, I struggled, but it was the opportunity that God created for me. I got that, I became that in that company because God opened doors for me. 
I was not skilled in that industry. I didn't know anything about it. And again, it was white male dominated. So God opened the door for me. And because I didn't know who I was, and because I played small, the opportunity just went away. So what I'm saying to you today, don't allow the opportunities that God has created for you because you are people pleasing and you want to play small. Because when those opportunities go, you never know when another opportunity is coming. So God is speaking to us. I'm telling you, understand that he's called you, yes, to be a servant. And for many of you servant leaders, but you have to understand today, you can't get it twisted, that being a servant unto God is the same thing of, as pleasing people. There is a difference. And when you allow God to direct you and show you the way, and you're true to what you're feeling on the inside, you'll be able to rightly divide the difference by Holy Spirit. And you'll say, God, I surrender to you. And I desire to walk the way you want me to walk. I'm not going to play small. I'm not going to continue to walk with my head hung down because I want everybody around me to be happy. It's time to give God his job back because your job is not to make people happy. Your job is to serve him. And when they see your light, let my light so shine before men that they might see my good works and glorify my father, which is in heaven. God does one waters, one planet, but God gives the increase. And when you position yourself to do what you're supposed to do, you'll see the light of God in your life. And you'll understand that serving God does not equal pleasing men. So I hope you understand that tonight. I hope that that made a difference for someone tonight. I don't know um, if you have any questions. I know that normally when I do this this Facebook Live on my laptop, the feed the feed is slow. But if you have any questions, I certainly want to give you all an opportunity. I want to be able to give you to answer any questions that you may have. If you want me to elaborate on something else. Um, I'll be happy to do that as well. I want to be able, since you all are here, um, I want us to be able to interact. Did any of that resonate with anybody? Did anybody see themselves in what I was saying tonight? Are you clear about the difference of serving and being a people pleaser? Do you understand that God did not ordain you to be a people pleaser? Do you understand that he did not call you to do that? I, I, when, when I looked up, it was, it's a ton of scriptures in the Bible that, that support what we're saying here to you in terms of servanthood and people pleasing. I'm, I'm, as you, if you're thinking about, if you have any questions or anything, I want you to put them there. And while you're doing that, I'm going to read some of these scriptures, okay? Because basically, I just want to have a conversation tonight. I wanted you to hear my heart and I want you to understand because like I told you, I'm 54 years old and I'm still getting this. But there's a, there are some of you who are on here who are much younger than I. And it's my goal to ignite you so that you don't have to go down the same street that I did so that you can take off and that you can be better and you can be greater and you can excel in that which God has called you to do. Don't wait around for somebody to validate you or to affirm you or to make you feel good. You have the ability, you yourself, you hear me? You have the ability to love on you. Second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. We fail in the love arena because we don't love ourselves first. So when you love yourself first, then you truly understand how to embrace and how to love other people. We have to understand that. So I want to share some of these scriptures with you all. And if, again, if you have any comments or anything, I know my feed is going slow there, but I am going to read some of these. So we read tonight, the scripture we read was Galatians 1.10. It says, for am I now seeking the approval of men or of God? 
or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Colossians 3 and 23, it says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Proverbs 29 and 25, the fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Now that is so awesome right there. Uh, the fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Colossians 3 and 23, 22. It says, slaves obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Then Matthew, and then, um, well, let's do Romans, Romans 12 and 2. That's the popular. We know, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. When we understand what God's will is, that's the thing that pulls and leads us out. Because see, what happens is a lot of us, we get in these circumstances and situations and man will have us locked in. And you're feeling uncomfortable because you are locked in. But you, you're trying to, God, why am I feeling like this? You're feeling like this because God's saying, serve me and stop allowing man to lock you in. Please me. We want to have the same testimony when, but when John the Baptist baptized Jesus and the heavens opened, this is my beloved son and him I am well pleased. We want to please daddy. We want to please the father. We want to please him. And, and we get, sometimes we get in situations and circumstances and I believe wisdom always cries out. Wisdom cries out. And you, you think about in the Old Testament, and I think about in Samuel with David. David, one of the situations he was in, he had taken the men and they went to fight and they came back home and their wives and children were gone. And David was standing there and his heart was broken because his women, his wives were gone too. But the men around him who had just walked with him. They just walked with him to victory. He just led him to victory. But now they're talking about stoning him and, and killing him because I'm sure they're like, we went with you. We went to do what you told us to do. And now we come back here and everything that we have has been taken from us. David had to make a decision. Was he going to stand there and, and wallow in where he was? Was he going to sit there and, God, what can I do to make them feel better? No, he went to God and he said, shall I pursue? He went to God and he said, God, what do I need to do to please you in this situation? And when he pleased God, God allowed the men who were with them to be fulfilled as well. So when we do according to what God has called us to do, when we serve him and we, we do what he tells us to do and we please him, he takes care of everybody else. So I go back to saying, give God his job back. So we have to understand that and we have to know that. I said to you already, Matthew's the sixth chapter, the 33rd verse, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. There are so many scriptures and the thing that, that I encourage you all to do, the thing that I encourage us to do, we got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. When you find yourself in a situation and you're going through something and you're not clear about what you need to do, take the manuscript, take the word of God, the logos that God has given us, take what he has given us in his written word and you dissect that thing until you can't dissect it anymore. Get the King James Version, get the Amplified Bible, get the NIV, get the Message Bible, get whatever you need to get to help dissect this word for you so that you can allow it to be a lamp unto your feet in the path so that you can walk and get what you need. The only way we can be successful in this, we have to know what God's word says because we will be pulled by the people. We will be pulled by the people and the only way that you will not be pulled by the people feeling guilty 
Because there's a difference between being convicted and the difference between being guilty. Man makes us feel guilty, but the Holy Spirit convicts us. So in making our decision, making your decision, if you're feeling guilty, it's not God. Because God doesn't make you feel guilty. Holy Spirit convict, convicts you. And not only convicts you, but when you yield to the conviction, he shows you the right way to go. And the right way to go is never, ever to please men or please the flesh. Now, the people who, who, are in, who are married will probably want to say, well, I got to please my husband and, and God called me to please my, my husband. I got to please my Yes. There is a way for you to do that, but not at the expense of your death within, on the inside. When we're talking about people pleasing, we're talking about allowing yourself to die on the inside, to die in your purpose for the sake of you affirming or walking with or doing something for somebody else. So when you're doing that and you're moving in that way, that's not God. When God gives you a relationship, you thrive together in that relationship. And yes, sometimes you have to come to com common ground. And coming to that common ground, God always allows fruit to be produced from it. I think that's the, that's the thing that the, um, I can't think of the word that I want to use, but that's the fruit is the outcome. When you see fruit, you know that you're moving in the way that God has called you to do. But if you're not producing fruit and you're trying to make somebody happy, it's, that's not God. You have to, we are fruit producers. So when we're doing things and we're connected to him and we're connected to one another, we're producing fruit. So. We just, I, I just want you all to be clear about that. And I don't know, um, again, I want to see here if you all have any questions or if you, you, you want me to elaborate further on anything, I want you to understand that now you are responsible. You're responsible for taking the information that was shared tonight and, and, and taking it and putting it in your hands and okay, God, now help me know what to do with this. Help me know and how to grow from this. Help me to apply this in my life now so to make me better. That's what your responsibility is because oftentimes, what do we do? There are thousands of Facebook Lives going on right now. Thousands of periscopes going on right now. Thousands of YouTube lives going on right now. We go, we, we connect and, and, and we listen, but we walk away with the information and the thing that God gives us in our hand and we don't apply it. Well, now is execution time. I want to ignite you and activate you to execute. Get better. Be better. Do more. Stand in your truth. Stand in your purpose. Do and be the daughter that God has called you to be. Ask God for the confidence and the courage and the strength so that you can be effective in everything he's called you to do. There's a sister who's praying the prayer right now. And she's saying, God, I just need you to send me that person who understands me, who, who knows my story, who's experienced the things that I've gone through. She's praying for you to come forth. So I need you to do all the self-work that you need to do. I need you to work on your self-development so that you can connect and speak life to her so that she can grow and be who God has called her to be. We don't want to be the one, the stumbling block who holds up the next person because we won't allow deliverance to come in our lives. We have to be willing to be set free. We have to be willing to be delivered. We have to be willing to allow God to work on our behalf. So if you all don't have any questions tonight, I want to go ahead and pray. Um, any questions, um, anything you all need to say? Um, I just 
I'm getting hot right now. You know, I'm 54. I told you all that. So I have my moments right now. But I tell you, I am so delighted and blessed to be here with you all tonight to have this conversation. And I'm telling you, I'm believing God that God is going to do an upset. He's going to do a shift. He's going to cause something to take place in your life that's going to cause you to look again. And when you look again, you're going to desire to walk as a servant, not a people pleaser. So I'm just trying to see if anything is coming up. But I'm grateful, Cheryl. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here tonight. Um, all the comments, I, I'll get to look at them after the fact because I see some here and they, they are going very slow. Um, but I'm just trusting God that he is going to bless you all in an awesome way. So God, we just, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our time together. We thank you for just, again, allowing us to sit at your feet to learn of some things, to hear of some things that will help make us better. God, we want you. That's all it is. We want you. We want your love. We want your wisdom. We want everything that is attached to you. We want all that you are to be manifested in our lives. And we're just believing you, God, to continue to work on us. Make us the daughters that you have called us to be, God. Give us the ability to allow our voices to be heard in this season. God, I speak the life of God to your baby girls tonight. I command them to come forth in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm trusting you with everything that is in me, God, by the Holy Spirit tonight. God, that you would allow your breath to breathe upon them and that you would encourage them and that you would strengthen them and that you would allow them to see themselves the way that you see them. When you see them, you see love, you see strength, you see power, you see wisdom, you see might, you speak all, you see all that you are because they have been fearfully and wonderfully made. And I thank you today, God, for reminding them that the moment that they opened their eyes today, that you validated them for reminding them that they are your beloved, for reminding them that they are your daughters. So, Father, as we wrap up this Facebook Live tonight, this broadcast tonight, God, we just want your will to be done in us. I thank you for Cheryl. I thank you for this group. I thank you for Jacqueline. I thank you for everyone who is attached and a part of this ministry, a part of this work. God, I pray your anointing upon each and every one of them. And I pray that the anointing that destroys and breaks every yoke, that it is released upon them this night in the name of Jesus. I speak healing unto them, not just physical healings, but spiritual healings, mental healings, God. I speak the healing of the most high God upon each and every one this night in the name of Jesus. God, we give you the glory right now and we trust you. We magnify you right now and we thank you because you are an awesome daddy. You're an awesome God. You're an awesome father. Abba, we cry out to you tonight. And God, even as we, we rest tonight, I speak sweet sleep. Those who are having trouble sleeping, I speak sweet rest to them tonight, God. I speak your life to them. I speak your strength to them. And God, I just pray your wisdom upon them in every area tonight. So we give you the glory and we thank you because you have called us to serve you. And just like you said to Peter, you had that conversation with him and you said Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But I pray not that your faith fail you not. I pray that your faith fail you not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. God, you called us to strengthen our sisters tonight. You called us to allow our faith to be elevated. And we pray that as we go, that we will grow in you and that we will allow your love to be upon us in such an awesome way. We pray this prayer thanking you in advance and we seal our time together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I'm grateful to God, Cheryl. Thank you again for allowing me to come and just to converse with my sisters tonight. I just pray that you all have received something tonight that will cause you to propel towards the destiny that God has created for you. You are amazing. God loves you. You can do anything 
Remember that your past does not dictate your future, but it creates lessons of blessings for you to empower yourself today. Empower who you are, love who you are, because you are simply amazing. Be blessed and remember that there is a young girl in there that God created with a dream. And that young girl today is a woman with vision and that she is you. Be blessed and have an awesome night. I love you guys.